haven't been out on a load in 16 days, including weekends. And today I'm taking you guys on a journey to Belgrade, Montana. It's actually the same place I picked up two weeks ago. I picked up some freight over there two weeks ago. And that was the time I was having vehicle trouble. Two weeks ago, after that, I had some repairs. I told you guys that in a previous video. And right now, so far so good. I don't know what I drive. 75 miles for now. So far so good. So I'm heading to Belgrade to a place where I've been before almost two weeks ago. Well actually it's been two weeks if you count the name. Um, I picked up over, uh, what I picked up out there is uh, the full semen and then I picked up some box of paperwork and I picked up the, the tools used to extract the semen from the bowl and I picked up uh, the tool to extract the eggs from the cows and all that stuff went to the lab. Today I don't know what I'm picking up. It's either going to be the tools or maybe a couple boxes with paperwork. I'm not sure exactly but from my understanding it's 24 by 24 and it only weighs 40 pounds altogether. The load itself. So I'm not sure what I'm picking up, but I'm picking something up. I guess we'll figure it out when we get there. That's what outside looks like. I woke up bright and swirly this morning, 4 a.m. Hit the road at 4:30. That way I give myself a cushion. You always have to give yourself a cushion. You can't just, you can't just leave just because Google says you're gonna get there in three hours. You can't give yourself only three hours. You know, you still need to fill up. You gotta give yourself extra for traffic. You gotta give yourself extra for road work. If you're dealing with snow, rain, any kind of weather issues, you gotta consider that. So, you can't be late for pickup because you didn't give yourself enough time. If you got dispatched from somewhere, and they know how far away you're from, and then some, and then things happen, yeah, but this load, <clears throat> this load we've had it in our pocket for almost a week, actually. So, when you're given that much time, or even a day ahead, you got a load, and you're leaving late, or you're going to be late because you didn't leave on time, it's not good for anybody. Don't do that. Besides that, I heard that Canada's burning on our end, close to our border. And we've been having like extreme heat in our area. That's not, we're not used to that as far as the heat being here so early. We're used to 90s and close to 100s for August. But this stuff here has showed up like before July and we've had no rain so everything is super dry. We've got fire bands everywhere. We've had fire bands for weeks now. Heck, we had a fire band at home when I was sitting at home. This is probably two months ago, maybe whenever they did the whole, the whole band. I had the 
I had the fire truck, whatever, chief, not a chief, but they came on the pickup and I was burning stuff at home. We were cleaning things up, burning twigs and things. And one of my great neighbors raked it in. So I had the, the fire station people show up. Well, it's only one guy. It didn't even make a scene with anybody. He asked me if I had a permit to burn. I said, no, I've been burning here for years. Why would I get a permit? And he says, well, it's a fire ban in effect for rural burning. You gotta have a permit. He says, you're doing everything right. Your area is good. You know, all that good stuff, but I couldn't burn. So anyways, long story short, right now we've got excessive heat such high heat that even the city of Spokane banned fireworks, not as far as people lighting them, but the city themselves canceled the fireworks show. That's how bad it is. Coeur d'Alene supposedly had it yesterday, but the city of Spokane, they did not. Today is Monday, by the way, July 5th, for me. By the time this video comes out, it's gonna be way later because I've got about I've got about three or four videos to put out before this one. I've been slacking, I know. But if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. That way it motivates me to put them out there sooner and sooner, faster and faster, and to actually film every single load because honestly not every single load gets filled so i need some support from you guys i made it here pretty quickly Within six hours, I uh, gained another 45 minutes, so I was not just going to be an hour early, but now I'm an hour and 45 minutes early. Um, the problem is, I had a contact phone number from the last time that I picked up over here, and the problem is that freight is not ready sooner than 1 p.m. as it was scheduled, so, um, which is, you know, which is okay. Um, I came to Wendy's. And I remembered here last time, when I was here two weeks ago, they had an issue here, they had an issue at Burger King, and I ended up going to Albertsons to get some chicken. The issue was, lobbies are closed because there's not enough working personnel to have a open lobby. So people can't even, you know, go inside the bathroom, go inside and wash their hands, place an order over the counter, you know, none of that stuff. My van is super tall, you know, almost seven foot tall with my AC up top, or actually it's, what, seven, what am I talking about, seven, nine, plus that, so I'm, I'm over ten feet tall, in the door I'm six foot tall, plus anything else, so, I don't know, I guess we'll see, it doesn't look like they have a, uh, little thing on the side but we'll replace it in an order however it is if I got to go around and into you know, the pocket and get out that's what I'm gonna do another way out um, but yeah I guess not everybody I don't know why some of our drivers you give them a, a time to go to pick up but for some reason not everybody can even make it on time to pick up I don't know how I have to train people. I gain 45 minutes. And a lot of times, our drivers, they can't even make it on time for the day. So, I don't know what's up with that. But anyways, I want a chicken sandwich from Wendy's. And then I'm gonna lay down, and I'm gonna nap for an hour and a half until my freight is ready. So maybe it is gonna work out better than I thought it was. At least I'm not late.
you know if you're planning to be early you will never be late if you you know made yourself enough time you're not going to be late so always plan to be early that way you will never be late just in case things happen on the road here's the line at the Wendy's pretty good sized line and I am on site Panther dispatcher just called me trying to find out if I'm on site I told them well I am here but they told me not to go in earlier than one o'clock so I'm just waiting here I drove up inside their gate and I'm waiting in the lawn for them I'm not gonna bother them or anything I just wait here until one maybe take a little nap I see that they they let a couple cows out over there. You guys see where the <clears throat> you guys see where the horse is? That horse in that building right behind the horse where the trailers are at. That's where all the magic is happening at apparently. So yep yep yep. Waiting for another half hour and then I'm gonna go check in with them. There ain't no checking in. It's just the farm here they'll just have something for me i'll take it and paperwork will be given to me along the way because they usually do not have anything they never they didn't have it last time either so it's kind of how it works <clears throat> but i'm montana weather guys 66 degrees in spokane it's like in the 90s 95s 93s we've been dealing with some over 100 weather last week over here it's a change 66 it's showing actually it's around 64 out there and sort of raining sort of not hazy but that's the kind of weather we're dealing with
that's what I'm carrying. Sorry, I didn't have time to you know, show it to you guys how it was strapped in or you know, stuff like that or talk about it or whatever. Um, I've got a bit of a situation now. Um, as, soon as, the, as soon as I got the, the freight in, I got a few videos from the kids saying that there was a house that was on fire in our neighborhood and the flames started, got out of control. Now the field behind our house is burning. And so right now there's like five or more uh, helicopters and planes simultaneously right now trying to put this thing out. And it turned into a wildfire now. And I'm not sure if they're gonna evacuate our, our house or not. And just honestly, I, you know, I'm driving in prayer, and uh, that's all I can do for now, so I'm glad that we can talk about anything else. Alright, stop my home look at the situation and I was already halfway relieved when I was coming up the hill and getting closer to the airport I saw where the smoke was I saw where the fire was and uh, basically I came home and my son explained it to me what the news wrote is in the back of our house there's a field that's like two different fields but it's pretty much one field but two Divided it in two, but it's all one big same field. And somebody's tractor caught on fire up there somehow. Somehow the fire came from a tractor. That's all I know. Either, you know, too hot uh, or tractor overheated and caught on fire, whatever the deal is. Fire got created by a tractor. So it, start, it's, it started, then somebody's. Uh, I don't know if the house burned down or not, maybe not. Anyways, all I know is this tractor started the fire, it started spreading everywhere around in our field. So they, they put it out, they managed that one, they put it out. But by the time they put it out over here, it already spread all the way down into like Diker area. Like Thorpe Road out. Well, towards that way. There's a golf course by our house. Um, it's kind of in that, you know, right before that Petro area. So all that, all that is in that area, in the forest right before that Petro. So there's there's a big forest there, and then there's going to be fields and houses, housing community, and then the Petro. So that fire is currently in the forest and slowly moving towards towards Spokane. Not moving towards I-90 really, but it's moving more towards like the South Hill of Spokane, South Side. So I'm just thankful that God answered my prayers, that it bypassed our house. That way, you know, I I prayed for everybody. First of all, prayed for my family, you know, for our stuff. Second of all, prayed for everybody else, you know, so nobody else burns down. Hopefully nobody will. Hopefully no no houses, no victims. You know, it's God's will. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you pray, but you know, we gotta do our part. The other thing is, I called the contact for delivery. That's why I'm already you know keep on trucking. It was it was set for tomorrow morning, but when I got loaded, she asked me what time I'd be there, and I said, well, I don't know. It, delivery set for tomorrow and she's like well you can do it tonight and I, I didn't even think that tonight was going to be possible I mean last time I delivered the load it was like 9 30 ish this time it's going to be like 10 o'clock I still have to put in the exact address of the GPS I'm 150 miles out doing 75 miles an hour so two and a half hours till I'm there there's slowdowns, I gotta go through Tri-Cities. That takes time over there with all the lights. So, 
I called the contact, she answered, and she says that she'll come and meet me. She lives five minutes away from there. So I'll call her when I'm 10 minutes out, give her another ETA, and get unloaded tonight. And then drive home tonight still. So, gonna be quite a bit of, I don't know why, it's, what is it gonna be, 1,200 miles? I don't know exactly how many miles it is with that team loaded. I know it was like 600 loaded. And then... It's going to be like 1,000 a thousand miles, I think, pretty much. With the time I'm doing, I think it's 1,000 miles. With however long it's taken me to, you know, get to pick up, get to, get to here, get to delivery, so... I'm rolling it through my mind and it's got to be a thousand miles with the time, time-wise by the time I get home. So, it is what it is. I was just tired sitting at home for two weeks, going to bed late. It's been a little bit like waking up this morning at four. It was tougher than usual. The drive is actually tougher than before because tougher than I ever remember it, honestly. And I was tired during, I was tired in the morning, I was tired at noon. Um, I'm tired now, it's 7.30 p.m. So, I've been pretty tired. This guy I've passed so many times today, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's car hauling. But, We'll get it delivered. The lab needs their semen and their eggs. And I'm here to save the day. That's not.
guys saw the unloading process. I took the stuff. I'm free and empty. I'm driving home. I'm gonna be sleeping at home tonight. Um, I guess I could have, you know, if I really needed to, sleep here, but for the last two weeks, I'm used to sleeping at home. All this would be is just uh, a nuisance, I guess. I mean, unless I had a different loan. This is it. It made me a round trip from home to pick up delivery and back home. So, I'll get there. Thanks for watching. Catch you guys in the next one. God bless. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Take care. Catch you in the next one.